Hi everybody. Just opened up my mail and uh, I've discovered that I have spotted dick. Now this isn't the result of that weekend in Vegas that I can't really remember. No, it's spotted dick. It's a much beloved English dessert. It's a pudding. It's a steamed or boiled pudding served with a rich custardy like sauce. Uh, really old, uh, really old school dessert. It's been around for centuries. Uh, the earliest that I've been able to uh, sort of dig up reference to it is uh, the 18th century. Now, there's actually a recipe for it, um, but the way they refer to it, it, it said they refer to it as something that's been around forever even then. So um, the name itself is eh, kind of shrouded in mystery. The spotted part makes sense because it's made with currants and uh, I don't know if you can see the picture here, but uh, the currants kind of stick out and so it, it's spotted. As for the dick part, that's kind of questionable. It's sort of like Saturday nights in Belltown. Um, Near is the, the most uh, sort of authoritative uh, historians and etymologists um, seem to agree that uh, the most probable origin for that, that word, and for um, a couple of hundred years, um, the word dick uh, was used to refer to all sorts of puddings, but specifically puddings. So, uh, Basically, when we were making the transition from Middle English into Modern English, uh, a lot of pronunciations, and in particular spellings, were kind of phonetic. Um, so, at that time, a lot of times, certain English dialects uh, across England, even across London for that matter, but across England, um, certain dialects tend to pronounce every letter of a word. So it wasn't, it wasn't pudding, it was pudding. And it could have very well have been pudding. Uh, and then, you know, at some point someone decided to pronounce it pudding. And then, as the English are wont to do, they shortened it to just dick. That's the theory, that's what I'm going for, that's, what, that's, that's the story I'm going with. So, Ordered this uh, online. It is uh, wow. I need new glasses. Um, it is actually this is actually a brand made in England. There is another. I want to say it's actually the Heinz Company um, that also does a spotted dick, and they actually do uh, produce it in the U.S. for sale in the U.S. Um, and then they have a factory that actually produces it in the U.K. for sale in the U.K. But um, so I'm supposed to remove this from the can. And I can either microwave it for a minute and a half, which I think is what I'm going to do, or um, you can actually poke a hole in this lid, put it in a pan of boiling water and almost to the top, and boil it almost like you would the original. Um, I'm, I'm not expecting great, great things out of this because it's canned. Uh, I, I really doubt that the real thing will be eclipsed in any way by uh, by this. Especially since uh, you're supposed to spoon on this custardy sauce just before service and this has been floating in it for who knows how long. So it's uh, probably absorbed a lot of the liquid. Uh, it's probably going to be um, a lot wetter, uh, you know, not as much of a texture as uh, the freshly steamed version would be, but I'm willing to give it a try. Let's pop her open and see what happens. So on the whole, not bad. I'm happy that I was wrong. 
uh, in that it was not canned with the custard sauce, or basically a creme anglaise. It was not actually canned with that in there, because if it was swimming in it, it would have been, um, you know, just this goopy, runny mess uh, coming out of the can. It probably would have come out of the can easier, but uh, that's more of a an issue with my equipment. <laughs> I need a new can opener. <laughs> There's really no getting around it. Um, I've just been lazy and haven't bought one. So, but uh, as far as the flavor, um, the texture, it was actually without the creme anglaise or without that custard sauce, um, it was actually a little bit dry. And I don't know that it would really benefit from the boiling procedure versus the microwave like I did. Um, since you only perforate the lid to make sure the thing doesn't explode while you reheat it. Uh, the majority of the pudding doesn't actually get exposed to any steam from the boiling water when, when you heat it that way. So it is just uh, convection heat um, heating it up and it's not actually re-steaming it in any way. Uh, not not really so I don't think it would have gotten really any more moist uh, by doing it that way so you, you, it actually could have uh, benefited from using a little creme anglaise or, or some sort of custard sauce on top of it uh, like you traditionally do uh, I was just lazy and uh, I, I kind of wanted to taste it straight what what it what it tasted like straight out of the can uh, speaking of which the currants, they were definitely there. They added a fruity element to it, but not as strong as I was expecting. Um, and, and really, none of the flavors, at least the individual ingredients, really stood out. They, they all did kind of uh, tend to blend together into a melange of, uh, you know, fruit and spices um, and, you know, sugar. It's still, it's still a dessert. It's still quite sweet. So, um... And I can only imagine that uh, putting the custard sauce on top would make it even sweeter because you tend to uh, you tend to sweeten those pretty heavily. Um, but uh, yeah, the the cinnamon or clove or allspice or whatever uh, spices they put into it didn't really none of them really stood out uh, above any of the others, which might be a selling point, might not be. But uh, it, it was it was actually kind of meh. Um, in terms of flavor, it, it, it didn't really jump out and jump out and bite you. Uh, there was a, a, a fair amount of vanilla uh, flavor to it, but mostly it was just sweet and um, starchy, a little bit crumbly. Like I said, it was it's dry. It was kind of dry, um, so it's kind of uh, kind of crumbly in the mouth and uh, wasn't like a moist cake exactly. And especially for a boiled dessert. Um, you would expect it to be moister. Um, so I'm actually I'm actually contemplating uh, getting an authentic recipe and making one from scratch to, just to see, and especially with the custard sauce, um, just to see what it would actually taste like uh, for real and not out of a can. Um, you, you sort of assume that anything that comes out of a can is going to be at least one quantum level of quality uh, below uh, something made fresh, uh, even with the exact same recipe, just because of um, the effects that canning can have on the freshness of food. So uh, stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, um, if you happen to run across a can of spotted dick in the store and it may happen it might not but if it does uh and you're in the you're in the search for something for dessert for dinner tonight you could do worse this was actually quite tasty um i would recommend uh looking up a, a recipe for a creme anglaise or uh, some sort of kind of rich sweet dessert sauce uh to pour on this because at least the can version is quite dry. Um, we we resorted to glasses of milk just to uh, kind of wash it down, but uh, I think I think the sauce would really help. So, with that, I'd like to thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.